Testing one, two. Testing, testing one, two. We on? We on? For sure? Okay. Hey, um, this is the resistance. We have food and water, and we have shelter. If you're out there, meet us out by the farthest creek when the sun sets to the east. But you'd be angry at yourselves for not cultivating a mindset to help our own people. Be angry that our ancestors didn't fight hard enough to keep us off of slave ships. Be angry at the traitors among our people that helped us get on slave ships. Be angry at what you didn't do for your communities. Be angry that you didn't feed your women and children. Be angry that you didn't cultivate the other mindset to build any business or economics to rise the people up. Be angry at that. Don't be angry at white folks for taking over what you didn't want. Be angry that you couldn't protect it. And again, this is a resistance. And we have food, water, shelter, and medical supplies. Peace, peace, Hotep. I meant so muy B. I meant Ra, I shay. Islam, black power, power to the people. You are now rocking with QP the Preacher on Humanity Inc. videos, and I am the CEO and founder of Humanity Inc. Welcome back to all my subscribers. Those of you who are new to my channel, make sure y'all hit that subscribe button. Today we're going to be talking about the, um, the mom, the Mexican mom who actually got deported back to Mexico. And her name was Rocio Roborla Gomez. She had called her family from the other side of the Mexican border to let them know what happened. Now, this lady has spent 31 years in San Diego, in the USA. And she tried to join this country, but she was denied. She actually got deported about three times, and she came back each time, which is illegal. Um, her son is in the military, so he's actively in the military. He might get shipped over there to Iraq, make sure he fights for this country in war against more brown people. So it came from a brown country, Mexico, to come to a brown country, America, that's run by white supremacists, or well, white supremacist elite, to go fight more brown people across the ocean. And um, he's been in the, the military for like three years, but I don't care. They really don't give a damn. They're still going to deport her. And her son is second Lieutenant Gabriel. Now he said that because he's in the military, he can't even visit. Like it's some kind of law that allows, that doesn't allow him to go over there. I don't know if that's true. I don't, I didn't know if military service members could not go to Mexico, but um, that's what the, that's what the article said. But he had told CNN that he felt like, I feel betrayed, honestly. That's what he had told him. Go figure. Of course you feel betrayed. You bought, it, you bought into the hype. Like, first off, you know, this is a sad situation. I'm sorry for, like, your family getting ripped apart. You know, like, mama, she, she held it down. She risked her life. She brought her kids over here. She wanted to give them a good life, good education, make sure y'all could be able to get that money. You know, with opportunities, which obviously is not... Which obviously is harder for you to do in your own country. So I'm sorry to hear what's going on, you know. But now I hope that you realize that since you over here, you gotta help out fix this country. You gotta go back and fix your country too. Because this is a black planet. And we fighting a global war. But secondly, I'm talking about my views on immigration. It's a little bit tricky because white supremacy has taken over the world. Like Indigenous people in every nook and every cranny are being oppressed, tortured, enslaved, and killed because we all niggas part of this global war. Now, before white supremacy took over the planet, we could travel. We could go to country to country. We could go to empire to empire, nation to nation. Motherfuckers was going all the way across the ocean. Yeah, Africans was coming over here to America, and Americans was going over there to Africa. That's... Come on, bro. We've been doing this, bro. We think they learned how to sell from us. Back to the story, though. Like, I believe people shouldn't migrate to other places. They should fight the war where they at. Because when you move right now, because we're in a global war, when you move from one place to another place, you're leaving the front line in the war. And you're basically receding that land to the enemy. So basically, if you at war, the enemy's right here. You find your enemy. Once you decide to pick up and leave, you give your enemy permission to move up and then take that defensive position. You, you get what I'm saying? We are at war. We're thinking of it as like a social thing or we're thinking of it as just 
your country, or just our country is um is battling, is doing its battle, or, do, or, or is at war. No, this is a global war, and every country is is in their own battle. But all those battles that's happening all over the planet, they all part of the global war. Like this BS with America and Iran, that's a battle. It's not a war, it's a battle. It's a battle that's part of this global war. You know, and this is exactly what happened. So we get up, we move, we immigrate, right, or migrate. And the elite, they make, that's because the elite, they make the conditions on settling for the indigenous people to, to live in. And we forced out, we forced to pick up a move. But then the elite comes in, they buy up all the resources, and they start banking, they start making money off of the places that we just picked up and moved from. And with that money that they make, they use it to continue the war against us. And this happens in everywhere. Like, this happens in communities, local communities. We call it gentrification. This happens to other countries. They go bomb the shit out of the, oh, sorry, they go bomb the shit out of Iraq and um, Afghanistan, Kenya, Syria. And then what happens? The military goes over there. We call it, this is called gentrification, but you think of gentrification as a social term. Nah. That's not it. Gentrification is a war tactic. It's a strategy of war. And it happens all over the world. In other countries, we create, train, we fund terrorist groups to destabilize the nation. We assassinate leaders and put new leaders there. Then we go on with the military. We help them rebuild while embedding our propaganda into their brain, making them use the American dollar. And private investors come and start buying up the land, buying up the natural resources. And then they use the indigenous population as cheap labor. We call that capitalism. And in the economic classes of the American universities, we are taught that this is all right. So in this global war, I advise people to stay where they are and fight in the way that they can. Fight politically, whether it be economically, spiritually, creatively, whatever. Because we fight in war at different fonts. It's not different fronts. It's not just a physical war. It's just not just that I got a gun and I'm going to shoot you. That's not it. It's a mental war. It's a spiritual war. That's why they made Jesus white. You understand it's an economic war. That's why they're starving out our communities. They don't teach us in school to, to build businesses to keep our communities growing so we can get our people jobs. They don't teach us that. They teach us to go work for their companies. Right? It's a global war. Mm. What else? It just has something in my mind. Damn, so I said physical, I said spiritual, I said mental, I said economical. Oh, and on um, food, food. Say for instance, most of our communities, they call it food deserts because we don't have access to healthy food choices in our communities. Like you got this, this company, Monsanto, or Monsanto, they creating genetically modified organisms and they giving it out to the whole world. These things, they kill regular crops. It's affecting our DNA on a bio level. So we fighting this war on different fronts. So it's different ways we can combat this war, but the main thing we gotta do, two main things. Like I said in the beginning, unite, practice group economics, create a culture, three things actually. These three things, we keep these three things together and we can take over the world. Just like that, straight like that. Now, I know y'all saying like, you know, you got kids, you gotta try for a better life. If it's not working out, you gotta move. I understand perfectly. I was the same way. I had three kids and I was just coming into myself. I was learning the knowledge of my history and my ancestors. I was learning how we did this and how we did that, how we knew about the planets way before the, um, the Europeans went through their age of enlightenment how we knew about the medicines and agriculture and mathematics and we taught them how we were selling across the planet. I was coming into myself, right? And everything, everything would just hit me. It would just hit me. Like, I would read this and it would bring me to this. I would watch this. It would bring me to this. I would be talking to somebody and I would understand what they was talking about. It would just hit me. I'm telling my fiance like, yo, baby, we at war. We got to fight. We got to fight. She's like, nah, we got kids. We can't be fighting right now. We got to do this and we got to do that. We got to get out of here. So I understand completely. Sometimes moving, it might be the best step for you. End of the story, we was both right. We had to move, we had to stack our money, we had to invest, and then we had to fight. It's real shit. 
You cannot fight a war if you broke. And believe me, believe you me, we are in a global war. We have been in for about 6,000 years. And I know there are school systems that they started to keep you enslaved. Yes, I just said that the public institution was only started by the elite to keep you a slave. And those school systems, they teach us that we've had two world wars. That is complete BS. I'm not gonna go into the world wars right now. Maybe I'll make a video on it, but the first world war happened when they first came out of the Caucasus Mountains and all the freaking nations and tribes in that area came up to fight them. And you can, I don't have the scripture on me, but any, even in the Bible, it starts talking about well, this is not when they came out of the Caucasus Mountains, but this is when they actually, we helped them make a nation in what is now Europe, the Roman the Roman Empire. And all, well, three nations actually, the Egyptians, the Ethiopians, and the Hebrews, they was all fighting the Romans at the same time. These are all three, these are three black um, people, groups of people. They was all fighting the Romans at the same time. But when they first came out of the Caucasus Mountains, every single tribe and nation in that area of north northeast africa what we now call the middle east they all came up there and they was all fighting them all of them and it don't matter that these people was fighting against each other in different wars when the freaking caucasians came out of the mountains and they started tearing this fucking world up everybody started fighting each other and they went up there to fight them of course we, we lost that's why the world is the way it is right now but um i'm gonna keep going but real shit you cannot fight a war if you broke you got to give back to two communities now. They both help develop you, just like my communities help develop me. So I got to give back to the community that I lived, that I moved to. And I got to give back to the community that I grew up in. And it's the same thing for immigrants that's fleeing whatever battle zone that they're coming from. Because, nigga, we still at war. And Rocio um, Gomez and her family, they thought that they had left the war. They didn't realize that when they was coming to America, they were still in the war. Just different battle. Same war, different battle, right? Like they teach you in school, they teach you about like the civil war, whatnot. They tell you this battle and that battle happened, this battle happened. Same war, different battles. The same thing right now. We're in a global war. We didn't had thousands of battles for the past 6,000 years. So she thought they, her family, you know, they thought they left the war. Her son enlisted in the enemy's army and they basically betrayed them because we're at a global war. And the war is indigenous people versus white supremacy. I didn't say white people. I said white supremacy is the difference. Because white supremacy could be upheld by a black person, brown person, or a white person. White supremacy is an ideology that it embeds in every fabric of our existence. So it don't matter if you're white or not to be upholding white supremacy. White supremacy. We have war white supremacy. Anybody that get in the way got to go. That's white people, black people, it don't matter. So they pumped that family full of this propaganda and the family bought it, that America is great. And then they came over here, you know, and most people, when they come over here, they start looking down at the native blacks. I'm not saying that family did. I don't really know too much about their personal life. But when a lot of immigrant groups come over here, they start looking down on the native blacks. They don't really want to deal with them because one, the media has betrayed them. To The, the media has portrayed the negative blacks for a negative stereotype. So nobody really want to deal with us. And then immigrant groups think that they might be better than us. So I had a, I had um, a couple of my friends, African. Where this guy's from? I, I think he's from, he's from West Africa. I can't remember what part though. Maybe Senegal. I'm not sure at the moment, but he told me like, you know, you different, like you different than the rest of the native blacks. And then I know he was right, but at the same time, it felt like an insult because it's like, Listen, man, we in this war together. If if my people don't know something, it's because we've been conditioned to think like that through this war, like through the battles that we've been through. Like, so as you being a person of color, as you being black, basically, you gotta, you got a duty to try to educate them too. You can't just come over here, try to take all the resources from our land, from our country, and then not help us out. That's BS. And I know I'm different, but still, I gotta help my people you got to help them too. Just like I got to help your people as well. We had a global war. So all immigrant groups, when they come over here, they should be making alliances with native black people. Because if it wasn't for us, y'all wouldn't even be allowed in this country in the first place. Real talk. Because when they started this country, they said that this was a white country. Right? 
They said all the benefits of this country was going to be only for white people. Now, the first immigrant groups that came to this country, they were Eastern Europeans. The rest of the Americans didn't even consider them to be white. They were niggers. They considered the Eastern, Eastern Europeans niggers, all of them, right? The only reason they became white is because they needed them to enter their system as a strategic form of economic warfare, right? So they let, they let these Europeans migrate over here to help push down the African black native populations economically, socially, ah, uh, ah. Uh. They called them white to boost their status up into this system. They became the middle class. They became our overseers. And then later on in our history of America, we had to fight and compete against them for resources and whatnot. All the while leaving the elite class unscathed. That's the only reason why this country allows immigrants to come over here. So if y'all come over here and y'all not rocking with the native blacks, that means y'all on their side. And that means we popping on y'all too. It's just straight like that. But if y'all come over here, I need to do y'all history. Y'all need to understand that the only reason y'all over here is because of us. Now, then they start letting South Americans and more Africans come over here while they was in y'all countries whooping y'all ass. They convinced y'all to come over here for a better life. Just so y'all could become overseers of the native black population. And then start competing and fighting with us for resources. But why the hell are we going to compete and fight for resources when we at war with the same people everywhere on the planet? Homie, it don't make no sense. It really don't. The native blacks have fought in every war in this country. And we have fought for all the rights in this country every immigrant group over here comes to enjoy so y'all wouldn't be able to buy land y'all wouldn't be able to start up businesses you understand y'all wouldn't be able to send money back to your family in other countries if it wasn't for the native black population in this country don't forget that don't ever forget that we put in work we show us respect yo put some respect on our name but to wrap this all up, yo, when you come to this country, make sure you're on the right side. And that's our side. I don't care if the neighborhood that you live in is a whole bunch of stupid blacks. You better find some freaking way. Open up a community center, yo. Start educating. Yo, get your citizenship and whatnot. But make sure y'all align yourself with native blacks. World trade for the people of the African diaspora. Money, bro. We want PC from whatever country you coming from. That means if you are not, you from Nigeria, and you and your family got some business going back and forth to Nigeria from America, yo, we want in. If you from Mexico, and you and your family got some business going back and forth from America to Mexico, yo, we want in. It don't matter, yo. Marcus Garvey, I'm on my Marcus Garvey and my Malcolm X shit. You already know that. It's QP the Preacher. I'm out. Peace.